All right, let's bring in the godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton. Thank you, first of all, sir, for your contribution to our collective well-being. And I just wanted to get a sense from you of what is your biggest concern and what is your biggest point of excitement about the advent of AI? So there's lots of short-term risks of AI, like causing joblessness or causing echo chambers where you just get shown advertisements that make you indignant, um, or cyber attacks, which are much better now that there's large language models. Um, but my main worry is that sometime in the next 20 years, probably sooner, AI is going to get smarter than us. Most of the leading researchers think it'll get much smarter than us. And then the question is, who will stay in control? There are very few examples of smarter things being controlled by less smart things. And so we don't know whether we're going to be able to stay in control of super intelligent AI. How is there any way to control how smart it gets? Um, yes, we could stop doing research on it. We could stop using more computation for it. But it's got so many good uses that that's not going to happen. People will keep developing it. It's going to be very useful in healthcare, for example, giving much better diagnoses, designing better drugs. It's going to be very helpful in education. Tutors can make kids learn about twice as fast as being in a classroom. And AI will probably be even better when you get personal AI tutors. That won't happen for a few years, but they'll, they'll be very good. What is so, the chance that we wind up living the movie The Matrix? Um, I don't think we'll live that. I think we're quite ingenious. I'm hoping we can come up with a solution to how to stay in control even when it's smarter than us. And the best example I have is a mother and baby. Where the mother's smarter than the baby, but the baby's in control, because evolution put a lot of work into making the mother care a lot about the baby. We're going to be the baby, and AI is going to be the mother. So, you know, it's going to lose, it's going to take some jobs because of efficiencies, but doesn't it also shine a light that there are certain things that we have neglected that we'll always need, like the artisan class and people who can build and fix and repair things that are not going to be done by robot in your or my lifetime? Um, Maybe not in my lifetime, but certainly in yours. Robots are getting more dexterous all the time. They can even do things like open car doors now. Um, it's a bit slower than things like large language models, which was a big surprise. But robots will get a lot more dexterous. For the time being, um, if you work with your hands on non-routine things, like a plumber working in an old house, you're going to be safe. But that, in the end, robots will be able to do that too. What is the first line of jobs they'll take? Oh, things like call centers or paralegals. Um, they're not going to last long because these things will actually know much more than the people who answers your call in the call center. Mm. Um, well, that's so a pretty low bar. Be, it is a low bar, but that's why that job's going to go first. Mm. Good because those people suck. <laughs> so I'd like to see him replaced by somebody who at least knows what's going to go on. If I don't get to talk to a human, I might as well talk to a smart piece of software. Well, listen, as we learn more about the application, Mr. Hinton, Jeffrey, please come back and let's discuss how it's going and what you think uh, needs to be focused on and dealt with. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe below and download our News Nation app right now on your phone, and you will get fact based, unbiased news for all Americans.